Hello on Wednesday the 12th of October and I hope that your week's going well for you. Loving Lord, we are aware of our human shortcomings. We ask that by your Holy Spirit you give us strength to work for that which is good through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's readings are from the second book of Samuel chapter 23 verses 1 to 5 and the first letter of John, chapter 4, verses 13 to 16. The focus of last Sunday's harvest was the generosity and goodness of God. I can remember when I was a member of the church youth group, and on one occasion, our leader suggested that we discuss the issues of things we rely on, but take for granted. We came up with things such as clean water coming out of the tap whenever we turn it on, a car starting when the ignition is activated, a roof over our heads and a ready supply of food. Our discussion took place around this time of the year and the purpose of the discussion was to highlight our lack of awareness of true need and poverty. Because it was harvest time, the suggestion we came up with were of a practical and tangible nature, things to do with our well-being. However, we overlooked the most important thing we all need to rely on. St. John highlights it in today's reading, that we need to rely on the love God has for us. This isn't some form of airy-fairy love. It's the most tangible love possible because Jesus showed the extent of it by dying for us. This love is how we can stay united with God. As part of the outworking of this unity with God is reflecting his love to others in whatever way is appropriate for them. There are, of course, many ways in which this can be done. In our other reading today from 2 Samuel, we come across King David's dying words. He doesn't try to claim how wonderful he's been throughout his earthly life. David knows he's human and therefore far from being perfect. But he's also fully aware of God's love for him and hasn't taken it for granted. So his summary of his life is that he's tried to keep a clean slate with God and respond to God's love with integrity. And this is something we should all aim to do with God's help. Of course, we won't always get it right. David didn't. But he, he always sought to have that oneness with God and knew when he'd slipped from his side of the relationship and then looked to re-establish the oneness which God wants with us so that he can show his true love to us. We come to our next prayer and as we've been talking about King David I thought we would pray for our leaders. Gracious Lord, we continue to pray for everyone who is in a position of leadership of any kind. We know that there are many difficult decisions which they have to make day in, day out. And these decisions don't become any easier with time. Pour your wisdom down on all leaders and we pray that they follow the guidance you give. What in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
But today's prayer points, let's pray for people who feel they are caught in a trap of poverty. Let's give thanks for workers who make sure that we have the essential services which we need each day. And let's pray for all medical staff who are feeling pressurised at present. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not to a time of trial but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Reverends Jason and Barbara have asked that I make sure to pass on their love and blessings to you all. And our blessing for today. To the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God be honoured, glory and power for ever and ever and the blessing of god almighty father son and holy spirit be with you your family and your friends today and always amen